Over the past two years, we've seen an increase in the notional of green bonds that have been issued. However, the pricing benefit of greenium has been low. A solution is to combine the power of smart contracts with green bonds to ensure sustainable finance future. We aim to shed more light on this topic in a two-part session coming up next. The first part will be with a presentation by World Bank Treasurer Jing Donghua. The presentation will be followed by a panel of academia, development finance, capital markets, and legal to debate how this can be done. Also moderated by Rahul Banerjee, founder and chief executive officer of Bond Value. Uh, he will be joined by Jonathan Horan, capital markets partner at Lynx Lauders, Justin Chapman, head of market advocacy and innovation research at Northern Trust, and International Finance Corporation's regional director for East Asia and the Pacific, Vivek Fatok. Now let's go now to the presentation first before the panel discussion. Hi, good evening, Jing Dong. It is such a good, uh, it's so good to see you uh, live from DC. I'm Rahul Banerjee, and this panel is titled Greener Green Bonds Via Blockchain Based Bond Indentures. Uh, Mr. Hua is a very special guest today because he has two distinctions. One, he did the first green bond, he also globally did, as treasurer of World Bank, the first blockchain based bond. I would first invite him to give us his vision of how climate uh, change can be financed and what does the bond market and capital market really do over the next few years. Mr. Hua, welcome and over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, a very good early morning, Rahu, to you in Singapore and good evening to colleagues on this side of the globe. And I hope everybody is doing well in this challenging time. So delighted to have this opportunity to join the uh, panel discussion and also share a bit of the work that we have done at the World Bank Treasury uh, in climate financing. So let me start by repeating what you actually uh, said, that it, the World Bank uh, Treasury has some uh, unique credentials uh, in the climate finance and green bond space. Uh, indeed, you know, in the early 2000s, we started to sense, uh, especially starting with uh, Nordic uh, European investors, that the social issues, especially climate change, was becoming uh, a compelling issue for investors. So working with Swedish bank and Swedish investors in 2008, uh, we did issue the world's first uh, uh, labeled thematic bond, the green bond. And uh, you know, between, between that time and, and now, uh, the World Bank has issued 165 green bonds, a total of $14 billion in 22 different currencies. And it's not the bond, the number, it's also the global standard we help to shape because standard you know, transparency, these are important matters. So I think from the first modest bond of a couple of hundred uh, Swedish uh, million Swedish krona to a green bond market is that's now at $1 trillion, we have walked a interesting journey uh, you know, in a short space of, uh, 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 of just about a decade. Then, of course, with the advancement of technology, with a distributed ledger, uh, we also uh, uh, was the first uh, uh, issuer to, uh, to issue a blockchain bond. And it's really, really interesting. And we did it in 2018, working with Australian, you know, authorities, uh, Australian banks and investors. Uh, it's a small bond, 110 million Australian dollar two year, uh, but the whole life cycle of the bond, uh, you know, uh, was done through distributed ledger technology, and that truly was the first bond. Uh, what we call it, Bondi, you know, we give it an interesting name, and that bond has now matured, meaning that it really has gone through the life cycle. And the fact is that although it's a small bond, when you look at the investor base, we have official institutional investors, we have banks, we have insurance companies, we have asset managers. So it did represent a very good pilot uh, in terms of uh, uh, using this to see the potential. So with these two experiences under our belt, maybe now I can turn around to see 
what do we see as a potential and benefit, right? Here, maybe I can venture into two broad categories. One is stay with capital market. That is, we certainly see potential for blockchain to bring efficiency, transparency between buyers and sellers in the securities market, and therefore lowering cost for everyone. And for us, that means a lot because uh, you know we issue 60, 70 billion dollar bonds uh, uh, every year, and we pass on the triple A financing efficiency to the end user, which is the poorer countries of the world. So if through blockchain, through new technology, we could lower the intermediation cost, that certainly is fantastic. But of course, there is, you know, the benefit goes beyond the, the, the pure market uh, intermediation. It's about a trusted, a traceable, transparent data that could be uh, distributed so that there is a higher level of standard, a openness, right? That, uh, that ultimately we need the size of the market to go up. Meaning $1 trillion green bond market is, is big, but compared with the need between now and uh, 2030 or 2050, it's still a drop in the bucket. Uh, so how do we you know, take advantage of the technology to ensure that we could use it to, uh, to, to, to crowd in more financing in climate. I think that's very, very important. So there, I think blockchain can help with what I would say better data, bring transparency, bring standardization of green bond, better analysis, meaning the blockchain can improve cost effectiveness of data management uh, and therefore supporting transparency and better you know, data analytics for, for potential uh, uh, potential investors, and of course, at the end of the day, it increases what we call traceability, and, and therefore the trust in the system. That is, you know, there we we hear terms like greenwashing, whether the final proceeds actually went to a project, right? Through so blockchain, so Internet of Things, and everything putting together, if the whole value chain from the issuance all the way to the uh, the use of proceeds and then reporting back uh, that can you know can we can develop that uh, infrastructure that certainly will build a lot of trust uh, in the system. The last point I want to mention before we we, we go to Q and A is really broadening from green bond as one label to the broader sustainable development. Uh, uh, goals of the United Nations, right? There are 17 goals. Each and every one is, re uh, is related. And with COVID-19, that actually sensitizes us that the post-COVID-19 build back has to be resilient, inclusive, and sustainable, right? So not only on climate change, on green financing, what about uh, responsible consumption? gender issue, right? Uh, 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 children's nutrition. You know, one thing I wanted to mention, Rahul, that is uh, food waste and loss, right? Uh, so the World Bank, uh, you know, uh, in addition to green bond, we actually use SDG now as a broader label. We actually issued bond and use it to highlight the very, very interesting uh, uh, challenge of food loss and waste. You know, it's, it's a very interesting phenomenon. On one hand, as we say, uh, as we see at the World Bank, 690 million people go to bed hungry every night. On the other hand, about one third of all food produced globally each year, about 1.3 billion tons is lost or wasted. And that results in roughly $1 trillion in economic losses per year. And now it links back to, to the climate agenda. The wasted and lost food accounts for 8% of annual greenhouse uh, gas emission. This is actually the third largest carbon emitter after energy and transport. It wastes about 25% of all water used in agriculture. And uh, you know all the food uh, wasted occupies about 960 million hectares of arable land 
or the size of China, right? So through using bond market to label that we are issuing bonds to address food loss and waste, we bring awareness to the global investor base. And I'm just using this as one uh, handle to this. So I'm very excited uh, about uh, you know technology and its application. We can go into a bit of detail when we go go to Q and A. But let me just stop there, Rahul, and uh, hand back to you. Uh, thank you so much. I think the you know if I just listen to what you're saying, we are one sixth of humanity is going to bed hungry, and one third of food is wasted. So there is clearly a lot that needs to be done. And uh, I think the solution that you're referring to is we can use technology and capital markets, fuse them together to ensure that borrowers and investors can interact. Uh, one one uh, really last finishing thoughts before we uh, move on to the next section is how can individuals contribute uh, in buying bonds, in giving it to causes that they really like to support? <clears throat> Sorry. Is there is there a role for individuals in this? Rahu, you read my mind. Uh, we didn't coordinate this question, but this is this is one thing that I see tremendous potential. Indeed, I think the World Bank and a lot of multilateral banks, our major bond investors are still institutional investors. But we see the millennials, we see the generation X and Z passionate about social issues, right? And if we can find the efficient way to issue global retail bonds, addressing social issues and climate financing, that would be tremendous. The reason we cannot do it are actually twofold. One is cost, right? Distributing to individuals involves a lot of the intermediation and the cost structure is something that we cannot do at the scale we do. The second is regulatory concerns, right? Whether it's CFT, whether it's AML, and this is where blockchain, artificial intelligence, uh, technology are on the verge of possibility combined with enabling regulatory framework that would enable us to solve these regulatory issue and distribution issue, cost issue. So here's my dream, Rahul. If I have a dream, that is, if the World Bank can issue retail green bond to global millennials, and I say, okay, the bond denomination is $1,000 or cent dollar equivalent. And I, I sell to 100 million global millennials, the Generation X. That's $100 billion. That is a huge potential we have not tapped. And therefore, Rahu, I don't know whether you read my mind, but this is really a passion of mine. And hopefully in the, in the not too distant future, this is one thing we can work on. Let me just give a shout out to Singapore, that is Singapore is leading using fit, FinTech to solve uh, you know, social issues. And I certainly call on um, Singapore you know, partners from government to banks to, uh, to, 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 to think tanks and uh, you know, to technology company, if we can work together uh, to solve this so that we can do retail somatic bonds to address social issues, whether it's hunger, women's education, childhood nutrition, and of course climate, this would be fantastic. Sorry, I went a little long, but this is a this is a, a, a critical critical question. Right. Um, thank you, thank you, Jingdong. I love your vision, and I think all the millennials uh, will try and you know contribute to this. I'll hand us back to the studios. Thank you very much, and have a great day. Thank you.